You welcome back, and we're now being joined by public affairs analysts at TK today to discuss the PVC collection controversies. Mr. Chude. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, it's uh, been quite some time. <laughs> Very good evening to you. That's right. It's quite some time. Um, so you've listened to some of the um, respondents who have spoken about PVC collection and the uh, crisis they are being faced with. Now, this looks to me like many will be disenfranchised in this forthcoming elections in February. What's your take? Well, you know, they will say different strokes for different people. Obviously, these are people that um, are the receiving end of, uh, of uh, whatever it is that is uh, not allowing them to collect uh, their cards. Uh, obviously, they are not happy. But one must uh, praise them for their resilience. You can see uh, some of them have uh, explained that uh, they have been there two, three, four times, and uh, they are still going there, uh, regardless of uh, the, the, the strong force. And so one more say kudos to them uh, for their sense of uh, duty and patriotism and responsibility. But again, just as they are complaining, there are others who have had uh, better experiences uh, with INEC. I think at the initial stage when uh, this exercise started, it was quite uh, difficult. And then some of us also had to escalate the matter to INEC offices. And there were some visible uh, you know, improvement in, in many locations, but obviously some are still going through all manners of uh, stress. And just like you said, uh, ultimately, you know, what is going to happen now, people are going to end up being disenfranchised. It's obvious that um, uh, there are still so many people, uh, before this exercise started, INEC had already told us that um, about 9 million people had newly registered. So you're looking at 9 million people, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to collect their PVCs, apart from other people who have registered long before now, who are also trying to collect their PVCs. And that was why when we realized the possibility that a lot of people would be disenfranchised through various fora and platforms, we started calling on INEC to extend the registration, which they have also done to the 29th of, uh, of uh, January, and belong to the Nigeria Civil Society Station Room. And having looked at uh, the rate of collection so far and notice the improvement again. We are also saying that uh, the INEC should be able to stretch this again to at least February 5th. And just like one of your, you know, uh, the interviewees, you know, also said perhaps the closing time of two o'clock might have to be extended to around five, you know, o'clock on a daily basis, obviously. Otherwise, a lot of people, if care is not taken, are going to be disenfranchised. Uh, so, um, INEC has to do much more. Yes. They have improved on the processes, there's no doubt about that. But the people that uh, your crew have been interviewing are real people who have also who are also experiencing real situations of not uh, collecting their PVC. So you cannot dismiss, you know, their complaints with a wave of the hand. It is real, but a lot of them are finding it very difficult to collect PVCs. Okay, so an official of INEC recently made a statement. And he said that there have been reports of INEC staff uh, denying some members of the public their PVCs on grounds of ethnicity and that INEC was going to look into that. With happenings now, wouldn't it look as if this report is real, even though it came from an INEC official? No, no, the fact that it came from an INEC official is very pivotal, is very, you know, important. And because all this while people have been, uh, you know, calling it a conspiracy theory that there was no proof. Obviously, INEC has done its due diligence. For INEC to acknowledge that this is happening uh, is, I think, um, one, it is kudos to INEC, the fact that they're able to acknowledge this. But then again, they have said they are going to look into that. I think uh, not uh, too long ago, I think there was this consistent or persistent complaint about uh, one of the INEC offices somewhere in Okota. And I think a few days ago, so we were told that uh, the woman who was in charge of that process had been removed and, and replaced. And then the people who had gone there, uh, to who went there subsequently to collect their PVCs, came out smiling that things are beginning to change. So obviously these things are going on. You know, and so what it means is that there are rogue elements within the INEC that are causing, you know, problems. These are unpatriotic people that are working for INEC and uh, very dangerous people because they are, uh, uh, standing in the way of the democratic process and must be shown the door 
out, you know, of INEC. Obviously, obviously, they are working at the behest of uh, some politicians. And I just hope that some of these investigations will even go beyond even identifying this poll and then also pointing fingers at the politicians, you know, uh, that are giving them this instruction to do this, uh, uh, you know, this, um, you know, anti anti-democratic, uh, to behave in this anti-democratic uh, manner. So it is something for INEC, having identified that this is true and that it's not conspiracy theory, then INEC now has to, you know, go the whole hog to show, you know, the way out of this unscrupulous element that are trying to give them a bad name. Now, looking at the uh, fact that INEC has repeatedly said that it is very prepared for this election, one would think that Looking at the uh, time frame as well for the collection of the PVC, it's just a week added and one day is out of it already. If by the end of the, uh, uh, the time frame, some people do not have their PVCs, what do you think would be happening yeah, obviously those people would have been disenfranchised. I don't know what other reports they can see. Obviously they can't begin to go to court because the process would have left them behind due to no fault of theirs. Uh, you know, so uh, I don't know. You know, people also tend to put the blame also or put the blame at the doorstep of the Nigerians that they are very late responders that they don't, uh, you know, start these uh, processes on time. We have seen this in the past, but one thing I must say for Nigerians is that at least as far as Lagos is concerned and other parts of the country, the turnout has been very, very good and very, very encouraging. You know, in many of the, you know, uh, 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 offices that uh, we have gone to. Uh, and maybe it might not be the same perhaps in other parts of the country, but I would say that there has been you know, a very good response on the part of the Nigerians. Now, uh, what is going to happen? I, I would hope that uh, ultimately by the time this, ex this exercise ends, that we will have very good story uh, to say, to tell that uh, virtually everybody that came to INEC offices were able to get their cards. I, that's what I would want to hear. That would be music to my ears also. You know, but I don't know how that is going to happen. So I think that we should implement this um, extension of uh, the closing term on a daily basis, give it an extra two hours, before it gets dark, so that by five o'clock they will close instead of you know uh, um, three o'clock, as, as is the case now, and then to also extend uh, the the deadline for the ending of the collection of PVCs by another week, you know, after 29th, the deadline, the recent deadline that has been set by INEC. After that, I'm not sure that there's anything any other person can do, most unfortunately. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.